Hey, hey everybody, welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast. Um, today is kind of a fun episode. I mean, well, they're all fun episodes. I mean, let's just, let's just face it, they're all fun. <laughs> but this one's um, going to be additionally fun. If they're not, we're doing something wrong. Doing something wrong. We have um, one of our esteemed team members uh, joining us today, and it'll be Dave. Well, actually, Dave's not here yet, but he will be here shortly. Mm -hmm. But I actually meant Audra who is our podcast producer soon to be expanding into other roles at Sterling and Stone per our big company uh, retreat that we just had. And so we just saw Audra a few days ago. And so now we're going to have her on the show and we're going to be doing some cool stuff with her and you could do some cool stuff with her too. So hang in there and, um, and let's roll. So this is going to be about how to, um, how to, how to ROI on a podcast, right? It's going to be like how to monetize a podcast. Like if you're going to start one, how do you actually make sure that that's a wise decision? Because that's what we, we did Sterling and Stone FM just kind of threw shit out there. And now we're really, you know, a year later, basically starting to say, okay, well, how do we really dial in the, the calls to action? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a lot strategy. more about this once Audra gets here. But I, but I think that it, it, a lot of people want to say, podcasting very much reminds me of blogging in like 2008. <laughs> right where anyone could start a blog and you see these blogs that are just like uber uber successful um and they're making all kinds of money and people think if i start a blog i'll make money too and it's just not that simple you need to actually have metrics and you need to understand what you're doing and, and all of that so talking about some of the the nitty-gritty details of what you should do before you start a podcast and you know determining the ROI on that, I, I think are steps that a lot of people don't take and that you absolutely should. So that'll be fun to talk to Audra because it's not just that she really knows this space really well. It's that I don't personally know anyone who loves audio as much as Audra. She, she loves the format. Um, and so it just, it really bleeds into everything that she does. So something cool. Um, do you want to do yours first? You want me to go first? We, I mean, hopefully Dave will show up in time to give his, but we'll, we'll see. I would love it if he does, but if not, ooh, if not, we should make up something. <laughs> what I think is cool is Frank Kern's new program. <laughs> um, get booked when no one knows who you are. I think he's really into that. That's my, that's my Dave impression. That it yeah, is. That, that, that was really good. Yeah. Um, so my something cool is a movie. Um, I actually am going to steal Dave's if he's not here <laughs> because I could have two. Um, but, but The Arrival, um, which... It was just like, I love this movie. Um, I knew I would love this movie from the very first trailer, which it has a, a, a pretty epic trailer. Um, and I just, I, I loved it. I loved everything about it. And it totally delivered on the promise of the trailer, which not all movies do. Um, but it's just a very, it's a very, for lack of a better term, it's a very realm and sans concept. And I, I love it. It's, it's like an alien invasion movie, but it's not, it's much more signs than Independence Day. There's no big attacks. The military are there, but whatever, they're just in the background. Um, it, the main character is a linguist. It's, it's up to the linguist to save the entire universe, which I think is fantastic. Um, and yeah, I pretty much just loved everything about the movie. And I think if you're a fan of smart sci-fi, um, you're going to be very, very happy with this movie. It, um, it was great. It's, it was a little... Um, I think my son would have enjoyed it, but Ethan was at um, a Boy Scout camp out this weekend and, um, you know, slower movies are a harder sell for him. So I thought it would be fun to just go with Haley and Cindy and we had a great time. And so anyway, it was super, super, super awesome. Uh, mine is revisiting old work, which doesn't sound very fun at all or very cool, but um, <clears throat> we're preparing to write Cursed. Uh, the last cursed's cursed's that's a weird plural um in if i don't know like a week or something sometime after <laughs> thanksgiving and uh so i need to read all the existing ones and there are six that exist and so we wrote these a long time ago uh in internet years and it's actually dated uh you know like we he refers to the year and it was 2013 so it's the end of 2016 now and so in our lives that are our, our writing lives and, and publishing lives, that feels like a really long time ago. And it was just a really interesting experience to go back to your own work after that much time. And what I found was I found a few things and it's that uh, number one, the first 
book, at least, it got better as we went on, but the first book, maybe the second, were written before we learned how to properly use a semicolon and a comma. So <laughs> those are all wrong. Like we have run-on sentences that are joined with commas and we have semicolons that include, um, you know, articles that shouldn't be there and stuff or um, conjunctions. And so that was very noticeable to me, minorly. Like it wasn't like this is bad or anything like that, but I noticed that. I also noticed that the first book was very enjoyable for something that long ago and I thought I might kind of cringe and I didn't. Um, however, I did notice in other later books, the part where we got and kind of got all realm and sansy and it stopped being as much of a relentless shapeshifter story and started getting into the bigger ideas. And so just, I would just say that as a creator, going back and revisiting your earliest stuff, like when I have to read Unicorn Western again, is going to be a really interesting, um, really interesting thing. So that was, so that was fun. Um, Audra is here and Dave can't join. It's making him watch it. So I say we let Audra turn on her camera and do a something cool. I love that idea. <laughs> You can do Dave something cool. Well, I've got a delayed something cool. I've been hearing you guys talk about Breaking Bad. And I generally boycott what's popular. And so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hipster like that. No, so I have been watching that and it's fantastic. It is just absolutely. What, what season are you on? Oh, I'm like, I'm seven episodes in. Like, I'm Oh, so, so many good things are yet to happen. <laughs> And so many good things already have happened. Like, I'm so impressed. So, yeah, I'm glad. That's my something cool, Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah Breaking Bad was fun because I think I've told this story before, but um, I wanted to see, like, I watched the first episode and I said, oh, I could probably watch this with Robin, maybe two. And she doesn't like things that are tense. So that anybody who's ever seen any Breaking Bad, like, clearly this is a mistake. But I was like, well, it'll be just about, like, these, you know, because... Brian Cranston at the beginning was kind of quirky, like he was had that scene where he's out with the hairdryer and his underwear and stuff. And so um, I was like, well, I'll, let me just watch a few more. I told her this. Let me watch a few more episodes and then I'll come back and let you know. And the next episode was the one, spoiler on this, mild spoiler, was the one where they had to dissolve the body. In, <laughs> I, in is that episode ocean. two? Yeah, it's no. I three. Yeah. Yeah, my husband just managed to walk in every single time there was a sex scene or graphic violence. <laughs> so, yeah, he's not watching it with me. He doesn't like sex and violence? Well, he does. So I don't know why. I think with him, it's because I wanted to watch this show and he didn't suggest it. So it's like, <laughs> no, I didn't recommend it. So, yeah, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> he's kind of funny like that. Yeah, it's it, that, that, show, that show is just insanely good. And since... um. Since Dave is still trying to wrestle his way on, I'll, I'll, I'll steal his real quickly, which is the new season of Black Mirror is holy shit good. Um, I, I've, I've seen four of the episodes so far, and they're just like, I loved the first two seasons, but this season is my favorite so far. It's so good. Have you watched those at all, Audra? Nope. No, I'm not really a TV person. I'm not. I like okay, these are so read and all so that. good. Yeah, they're like, they're like Twilight Zone. Um, except they're, they're, they're thematically uh, similar. So every single episode basically starts with the premise of, is our technology going horribly awry? <laughs> and where is it going to take us? And um, every question just explore, or sorry, every episode explores that in just the darkest way. And it's just, it's just, a, it's amazing. I, I saw one last night that um, took place in 1987 which they all take place in the future. Um, and of course, it's not what it appears when it is in 1987. But even everything about it, I just loved down to the last shot. I'm like, man, just anthology television does not get better than this. I just, I think Black Mirror is so, so, so good. I could watch it all day. I'll have to check that out. That's creeping over into the real world. I just read a new Adobe product. They call it Photoshop for audio. And you can basically make anyone say whatever you want them to say with something unsettling. Oh, wow. I want that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's just so many ways that could be abused and misused and just generally a good time, honestly. Well, yeah, but can't they, just like Photoshop, they can spot a fake. It's the same thing, right? One would hope. One would hope. <laughs> there's probably like a little robotic artifact type of thing with it, but I have yet to hear it. It's still kind of under wraps. I, I have a feeling that we could just like 
get that as a company expense and then just start a new show called Fun with Dave, right? Oh, because yeah. wouldn't everybody like to put words in Dave's mouth? <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this sounds very promising. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so Jen K says TV will never be the same after season one, episode one of Black Mirror. Yeah, very true. Johnny can go on and on about the that first episode ever because it, it really is like, um, you know, okay, so here's the parallel. Christine is writing, um, working on our Smart Artist autoresponders right now. And the very first ones that you get are like, I think she uses the word fuck like three times in the first email just to ba basically say, look, you're either with us or against us, <laughs> right? You're either one of our people or not. So the very first episode of Black Mirror does exactly that. Like it is the most jarring first episode of television I've ever seen by like a lot. And it's exactly that it's like you're right if, you, if you're on board for that first episode you'll take whatever they throw at you but so what should i do first mr robot or black mirror um that's a good question um Johnny, i would can't hear you you're talking are you talking johnny you fuckers trying to keep me off <laughs> yes 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 we are um I, I think black mirror just because it's it's standalone you can consume it all and it doesn't like you could watch one and then not watch for a few months or whatever. It doesn't matter. Cause they're each episode is total. It's like watching the twilight zone. Each one is totally self-contained. All right. There it is. There you are. So speaking of Photoshop for, uh, for, uh, for audio and Photoshop for video and creating fake things, um, where would I go in this world of hedonism and falsity of ours to, to find the real scoop on a topic, say, publishing where would i do that i don't know johnny where would you do that <laughs> dave i'll bet dave knows dave do you know where would you go if you wanted to do that find some, no a bunch of authorities a bunch of people getting together talking about publishing and learning oh how to do oh kindle boards kindle boards no maybe. yeah oh go ahead dave i want to hear your theory maybe the smarter artist summit that's it, the Smarter Artist Summit 2017. Where and when is that, Dave? Oh, God. April 20. No, 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 don't even guess. Don't even guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you know the where. The where is Austin, Texas at the JW oh, Marriott. It's not in downtown. Orlando, Florida. It is not in Orlando. It is wow. April 26th and 27th of 2017. And uh, you'll be joining the SPP crew. Um, Three of us. Audrey, will you be there? You won't be speaking, but are you, you're, you'll be there, I assume. I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. The last one was fantastic. Uh, so us, will Austin Dave be there? Yeah. <laughs> wow, Austin <laughs> Dave has a little... Wow, he even got a yeah. <laughs> us and six speakers will be uh, taking the stage for two days to teach you about everything that we feel like over the last year, what we've learned, what, what's... Um, what's happening right now in terms of building sort of the best and most efficient, smarter artist, entrepreneur business. And um, so that's going on. Any, anything else to say about the Smarter Artist Summit? Any, anything you want to toss in? I feel like this didn't have enough dick jokes in it. <laughs> no? Will there okay. be any pork pie hats? <laughs> I'm sure there will. All right. Well, let's just conclude. It's going to be sponsored by Target, I hear. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just conclude this travesty. Uh, yeah. The Smarter Artist Summit, again, April 26th and 27th. Tickets are selling out, so act quickly. Um, and that's smarterartistsummit.com. It's, like I said, April 26th and 27th of 2017. And I will remind you that as this airs, the time is also running out on the, the early bird pricing at the end of the year when it becomes, you know, once we hit January 1st, the price is going up $300. So if you're going to get your ticket, I would do that now. So that's it, smarterartistsummit.com. And with that, I will hand the show over to, well, I won't hand it over to Audra. We should I'll, hand over I'll, all of our shows to Audra, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's weird vertigo for listeners to hear the intro from Audra and then here she is in the middle of the show? Well, her voice is different in the intro. It is. No, this yeah. is my real voice. Like only twice in my life have I been recognized by my voice. You know, I was in radio for years and once was at a pool hall and the other was at Avalanche that we just had. <laughs> <laughs> right. What your radio voice? Last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's only happened twice. So we will, I guess, kind of hand over control. And so that we're, today we're going to be talking about how to 
I, I'm without being overly pointed about it, how to make money from your podcast, how to make your podcast a success. Let's say that a good return yeah, on yeah, your okay. It, it's it's money. I think this comes down to, and Audrey, I'm sure will correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, it's it's a knowing your why thing, right? Well, a lot of people. Yeah, go ahead, Andra. Yeah, no, that's goal one. Yeah, or the the first thing you need to determine is, you know, what do you actually hope to accomplish with your podcast? You know, this can be anything. Um, you know, you want to expand your audience. You want to connect with the audience you have. You want to get more exposure. You just love audio. You know, you've got to really figure out what your goal is, and that you know, not even considering money at the beginning, like because money is not going to necessarily come quick. And so it's not going to keep you motivated. So you've really got to figure out your why. Right. It, it could be as simple as, you know what? I want to be a better oral storyteller. I mm -hmm. want to be able to engage with somebody and talk to somebody. I want to expand my network. Um, you know, uh, in one of the, um, it, it, this isn't an in-person mastermind. It's, a, um, it's just an email only mastermind. But there was a, a really interesting conversation maybe two or three weeks ago that I was just like a fly on the wall. Um, and there were, there were a couple people in there with super, super successful podcasts. Um, but they were, they were actually suggesting that people don't start a podcast um, because it's such a difficult you know, way to make a lot of money. And um, somebody else raised their hand basically and said, you know what, I disagree with that because it's, it's about knowing your why. And yes, it's a, it's a ridiculously hard way to make money if that's your, your, your game. But I've been able to, and they, they made a whole list. I've been able to talk to this group of people and the list was very impressive, right? And not one of those people would have got on the phone with me and talked for an hour <laughs> without a podcast. But with a podcast, you know, would you like to give me a free hour of consultation? No. Would you like to be on my podcast? Yes, <laughs> right? So it's, it's knowing your why. That person, they did it for networking. Like, look, I've had tens of thousands of dollars worth of valuable conversations that I never would have had without the podcast. So to me, that is a very legitimate reason to start a podcast, but it's also, it, you can't make that up as you go along. You have to start the podcast by saying, who are the 20 people that I want to talk to over the next six months, you know, and, and really frame that out. Yeah, but you know, the new is kind of wearing off. Um you can still get really great guests, but a lot of times, you know, people are asked to be on so many podcasts that it's like, all right, so who am I going to invest my time in? Who's got the bigger audience? So even then, like you have to work at it to get your audience size, you know, to where a bigger name would want to come in and be on with you. But yeah, no, it's still, it's still a great way to network. It's still a great way to get, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with somebody that you might not be able to get. Well, yeah, the we parallel. can't get anyone on worst show ever. <laughs> <laughs> we should start trying though. We should like aim for like Benny Hinn or like someone who you get really good <laughs> town with. Like it could be fun. But but I think that and and I I made this um this parallel before you came on, Audra. But see if you agree. I I very much think podcasting in 2016 is like uh, blogging in 2008, right? Where there are a lot of really. I mean, that's when I that's when I registered my first domain and I came out and there were, I saw po blogs as like this possibility, right? Because it, it's free to start. Anyone can start. And um, all you got to do is be consistent. And if you build it, they will come. And here's these eight other blogs that are just killing it with traffic and monetization. And all they're doing is writing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, out. Look at the blog landscape today. Like, you know, you can still break through. So what you see in blogging today is probably what podcasting is going to be like in the future. Like, it's fantastic because, you know, you don't have gatekeepers. You don't have, um, like, you know, my experience is in radio, you know, and you've got maybe three radio stations per region and that's it. Like, there's no other room. But, you know, the fantastic thing about podcasting is that anyone can do it. You know, anyone can get on there. And if you're producing consistently great content, you said, you know, just writing, but they're writing really good stuff. And so consistently good content on a podcast, that's what is going to help you break through. Well, I, I think one of the things about podcasts that makes it a little bit easier to distinguish good from bad is the level of quality. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, there are a ton of podcasts out there that it just sounds like somebody in a big empty room, not like Sean's room, but just like it, it just sounds like no effort was put in to make it sound good at all. And immediately you can discount those podcasts. Yeah, um, and I think they just don't professional. know any better. They don't know any better because you, you go online and you search, how do I podcast? And you get, you know, a million and one different articles saying, hey, it's really easy. Just get a microphone, hook it up, get the <laughs> right. and you're good to go. Well, how is that different from like in, in the blog landscape when you see like, uh, you know, a free theme and like everything's just kind of junk, junky and there's clutter and there's no like, there's no um, reader experience thought, right? It's just... I, well, you, yeah, I have a blog. Look, Daddy, look what I did. <laughs> right. What do you want? Higher, a hero parade? Right. <laughs> you have a much higher hurdle to get past if that's all you've got. I mean, your content has got to be incredibly stellar. You know, that way your audience forgives you. And uh, it's the same with podcasting. Like, if you don't have a high quality sound, you have just an enormous hurdle to get over. So, you know, I always say start with the best that you can afford. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, take time to pick out a good mic, you know, do acoustic treatments to your, your uh, room. That's what that is behind me. Um, it's just stuff you glue on the wall. Yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> it's I, 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 I do think that, you know, yeah, there are a lot of people getting into to podcasting now, but I, I think it's one of those things where the, the herd will be thinned out by quality alone because people, people that aren't doing quality podcasts will see that there's no return on their investment nobody's listening and they're going to give up it's kind of like people that start youtube channels and give up immediately so i think yeah there are a lot of people jumping into it but at the same time i don't think that they'll stay in it very long and eventually everything should level out i would hope well seven is the seven <clears throat> is the number most people don't hit past like seven podcasts wow they get out, you know, and I say most, I don't have an exact number, but after seven episodes, they, and I'm guilty of this. Have I told you about my first podcast? No, but I no. want to hear it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it called uh, Better Off Undead? Uh, no, no, it wasn't. So um, I thought I had it all, you know, I, it was a home run. So I quit smoking several years ago and I switched to vaping. And there's a really strong community of vapors in Dallas, Fort Worth. That's where I was. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to make them the most awesome podcast. We're going to work with local vape shops and all of this. And so I got my buddy, Tom, who is just a fantastic, huge voice guy, you know, built the intro, just made it so pro. And after four episodes, I pulled the plug because I made the single biggest mistake that a person can make. You had Dave on. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't know my audience. References. <laughs> my audience was not there. They were on like, you know, video and picture social media so they could show off their vaping gear. Oh, right. Of course. And it's just like, oh my God, really? So I, I disowned the URL. I pulled the plug, removed it and said, I'm not going to make it. Disowned it. How much is there to talk about vaping? Oh my gosh, I can't even. There's imagine. actually a lot. I think you could talk about. That's the thing, dude. You get there's anything could be a podcast. It's just you have to be interested enough to be able to revisit it every single week. Well, uh, and that's, that's don't forget we have a podcast that's devoted to busting on you. Uh, <laughs> right? That's true. That's the beauty of it. You know, it's the same when you're building an audience online. Um, you go narrow, you go for your niche, you know, you go for the people who you can really connect with. And since there's not a lot of overhead in podcasting, you can go like super narrow and talk to your people. And that's just one of the great strengths. And, and you don't really have to compete with the big names because, you know, you're engaging with a smaller audience and serving them with exactly what they want, where they want it specifically. Yeah. And, and I think it's really important too to figure it out. So be willing to record, you know, four, seven shows or whatever, but don't even put those out. Like no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, okay. So step one is to understand what your goal is, right? Why. Step two is to figure out what group of people are going to help you accomplish that goal. Okay. And that's your audience, right? <clears throat> step three is to figure out what those people want and give it to them in a way that only you can, you know, your USB unique selling proposition, whatever you want to call it, you know, something that makes you special in their eyes, something you can do for them that nobody else can. And then you build a show format around that and you stay super engaged with them 
and, uh, you know, be reactive with them because, you know, if, if you're just talking to, I don't know, a microphone, don't care about your audience, they're not going to care about you. But when, and this is one of the things that you guys do so well is engage with your audience. I mean, you're reading comments and you don't have to do it live, but, you know, just engage with your audience. Yeah. So that, so, go so, ahead. Wh- I think it's easy, like nonfiction authors have it pretty easy because they're, they're writing books based around the topic. What would you suggest for like fiction authors? What sh- sort of podcast should they have? Uh, something devoted to their work or devoted to like perhaps a theme, a, a genre or something? Well, fiction. Okay. So fiction podcasting, you know, story-based podcasting is still really in its infancy. Um, it, it is in the process right now of taking a step forward. Uh, Gimlet Media just released mm-hmm. their first, um, first fiction-based podcast. And, you know, you can't attempt that, but know that you'll be, you'll be held up against people who basically spend their entire week putting together audio scapes and writing scripts directly for the audio format. Mm-hmm. So... Like so you'll basically be going into an area where you're not a specialist and everyone's just good. It's like, here's a basketball, you barely know how to dribble, and then they're putting you on the court with like pro <laughs> players, right? And right. That's not to say that you can't do it. That's not to say that you can't do it. But just be aware that, you know, the quality bar is constantly being raised. Um, you've got to have, you know, really compelling content. Um, and like I said, you don't have to go in and do soundscapes and everything. But your, your script, you know, what the story you're telling has got to be so utterly compelling and it has to be, you know, created for the uh, audio medium. Now, let's say, you know, fictional podcasts aside, uh, another great way to celebrate with your fans is curated content. Now, Dave, I know you're a fan of this. I've heard you talk about it, and I just think it's fantastic. Um, so if you have, like, uh, a Star Wars podcast, Um, or a Star Wars fan base, you know, all of the things that appeal to those Star Wars fans, you would share that with them and discuss it and that type of stuff. So curated content is fantastic. So it's not really about, you want to make it more about Star Wars or something rather than your own books. Oh, yeah, for sure. You would hope that, you know, the people that like Star Wars or whatever, maybe they'll like, well, maybe I ought to check his stuff out. It's personality, dude, right? It's like this person likes the same things I do. So we're, we're compatriots. Simple simple analogy. You're sitting, you're sitting down, you know, having dinner with, with a group of your friends. What are you going to talk about? And that's what you talk about. Don't ask Dave. Oh God, that's the opposite of the advice winner. (laughs) (laughs) We actually have stories about Dave at dinner (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the things he talks about. <laughs> but you get me, right? It's the people that you want to hang out with. It's what you would talk about. You know, you're talking yeah. about the latest, you know, movie that's coming out, whatever. It's just stuff well, that... Right. So let's say you write fantasy books. Then your, your podcast wouldn't be about your fantasy series. It would be about all fantasy series. It would be about Game of Thrones and whatever you're reading and movies that are coming out that you look great. Topical ones, like the best fantasy heroes, uh, best villains, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, that's, that's a, uh, when we were working with um, uh, Garrett and, and Legendary, that was a podcast that I pitched. Exactly that. <laughs> Um, but he didn't like it. He wanted to do one that was just about Underrealm books. But I think that 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 makes it too narrow. It makes it way harder to go wide. Yeah. Well, another thing, you know, depending on your audience, because your audience is going to inform everything, every single thing that you do is informed by your audience. So if you're more of a, of an authority and you want to do, you know, teaching and education, uh, you can pick apart, uh, other stories, um, and just give a deeper look into somebody else's work. Um, It kind of sets you up there. And gosh, you know, there's no limit to what you can do in podcasting. And I have, I've seen things work that just shouldn't. And I've seen things that should have worked. SPP shouldn't work. I mean, really. You got in so early. You did. Whatsoever doesn't work. (laughs) (laughs) No, it It works in its own way. Like, I remember when I first started listening to WSC, I'm like, I, I look over at my husband, I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody does. That's our success story right there. And I'm like, oh my God. Did you, okay. did you look and say, it is a podcast? It is. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you know, know you love it. 
I caught it pretty quickly. I caught it pretty quickly. And I'm like, okay, yep. Yeah, this is good. And so even now, like I look forward to going in and editing these podcasts because of your personalities. And the fact that you have over, you know, however many years you've been doing it, you've really polished it. You guys have gelled together. And uh, yeah. So I don't even remember what you asked me, but. Well, okay. I, I think we're so ever is actually a really good example here because that, that show is never going to be huge at all, but it is the people who listen to it. Love it. It's and a the, passion project. It, it is a passion project. It's our literary. <laughs> so it, it is the, for the people that it speaks to it, it very passionately speaks to them. And, and I think that that is what matters. You don't need a huge audience. You know, SPP doesn't have a huge audience, but we have a very committed, loyal audience. And that's the defining factor. It's, I think, it, and blogging is the same way. How many times have you seen people completely ruin um, their, their potential on their blog because they're going for numbers? It's same with email subscribers. It's not volume that we need here. It's engagement. You can get a hundred people on your list instead of a thousand. If they're engaged, you can have 50 listeners to your podcast if they're engaged. Right. So. Yeah. You know, you bring up an excellent point and that is polarization. Like I've seen a lot of, uh, audience builders and podcasters try to, to go too wide. And so, you know, the worst thing in art is, not to, you know, make people angry. It's to make people not care. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. They're going to love you. They're going to hate you, but you're making them feel. And that's what you're going for. Yeah. Because what's, what's worse, um, you know, having people not like you or obscurity. Right. People build their careers on being hated, you know? So what's, what's other than quality? Cause I think, I think we can all agree that like there's podcasts that just shouldn't be out there because they're, you know, they're, they're using the built in mic. <laughs> and, and by the way, it's not expensive. Like these mics that we all use are a hundred bucks. It's not like, they're not the best, but a hundred bucks. Right. But if you can't, I, and I make the same argument with blogging, like it just because it can be done for free does not mean it should be done for free. If you can't get out your best foot forward with, you know, a, a quality mic or, you know, in, in your blog, like at least a custom theme, like I don't mean a custom theme, a premium theme, something that isn't just off the shelf, but makes it look like you care a little bit more for your visitor. Like that kind of stuff is important. It, it does matter to your reader. It makes you stand out from everybody else. So besides the, the basic quality issues, Audra, what are other mistakes that, um, that, that you see podcasters very regularly making? They don't plan ahead. You know, they just go into it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get away with it because like I said, you've had a lot of years of experience doing it. And so, you know, right. But even so, I mean, we what was the plan ahead we were talking about all last week, right? It was yes. <laughs> like, we need to do better. And, and it's not, it's not okay that our audience is okay with this. Like we still need to, we know where we need to do better. And we spent, I, I mean, I'm actually glad we're talking about this because that was part of the point. Like, yeah, we have a few successful podcasts, but they could. There's not one podcast that we couldn't do a better job. We even talked about ways to make worst show ever better, <laughs> which is hilarious. But what? I liked all of our ideas. I That's where it. I have the most notes. I don't have notes about anything that matters. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um, We're gonna I think, ruin worst show ever. I think me too. I actually, I have, I have notes. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think that, that that's, that's, that's great. Like you can always make something better um, and preparation is huge, but we're, we are talking about that. We're talking about knowing, I mean, we've already started to do this as far as show running the shows instead of just making it up. Like each one of us is going to own a show and kind of, you know, be in charge. I think that's making a difference. Staying on point for just 15 minutes instead of creeping into 20 or 30, that makes a difference. So it's just being aware of, the experience that you owe your listener and everybody listening to this already knows this as far as books like there's certain we, we don't just release our books making it up as good along <laughs> and publish it but, yes. oh, i know that maybe you know um who was frictionless publishing thomas course and Knowles. maybe he's doing that but no one else like we take the time to craft our stuff edit it, revise it. And it's the same with our, our podcast. The, the more planning we put into it, the better product we're going to have. 
Well, I like that parallel. Sorry, Johnny. No, I like that parallel of, um, you know, the way you prepare a story because essentially good audio, it is all storytelling, even if it's nonfiction. I mean, it is all storytelling. Um, You know, we're kind of wired to want to know what happens next. And if you can work that into nonfiction, like, I mean, it's just, it's magical is what it is. So go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. So speaking of uh, ways to make worst show ever better, I'll just add really quick that we're considering an Ask Dave segment. So if you want to get your questions in, you know, the, the biggest example of Ask Dave was Logan Rutherford asks Dave for dating advice. So if you want to send in a question for Dave, maybe do that. What Send it to help, right? Help at sterlingandstone.net or tweet Dave. No, don't tweet Dave because he'll, he'll screen them. Don't send them to him. Send them to us. And, uh, no, so he, help he has to see this stuff blank for sure. Right. For, yeah, because we don't want him to be prepared or to be able to, to prepare, it's the opposite. If Dave's prepared, it makes the show worse. Um, so, so <laughs> I let's, have a notebook in front of me, but do you have any other segment? Um, because uh, yeah, I have. Um, because yeah. this is this is legit. Like we talked about, how do we improve every show? And we talked about worst show ever as this thing that we do. Okay. But yeah, we we talked about doing a. Um, if you if you ever saw um, whose line is it anyway when that was on, they did uh-huh. scenes from a hat. So that, you know they just had a bunch of like random prompts, like improv prompts in a hat. So I thought we could do that. Um, regular Florida man segment. Dave does motivational quotes. Like we read him a quote and what does he think about that? Like when Dave did the Tao Te Ching, that was great. Um, uh, hypotheticals, maybe a return on hypo- hypotheticals. Rant sure a lot of work for me on this show. What the hell? No, no, you don't have to do anything. You, just have you to are respond. the show, Dave. Don't you just, just respond. Then I'm like, taking we'll, we'll NPP off. <laughs> you'll do the work. Um, so, so those were some of the ideas, but that, then to get back to the idea of, of like... So, so Sean talked about like what are mistakes and, and do not do's. Um, so let's, and actually before I ask this question, let's just, I'll just say that um, we're doing, Audra's going to be doing a podcast retreat. Um, I don't know. I don't know that we have firm dates yet that, um, well, no, I think we do. And Amy's going to tell me on the worst, but no, no, that's no, coming it's up. Actually, it's, it's actually, it's it, still we fluid. Did. Well, no, we did, but, uh, but I remembered something that I had not put on the calendar. <laughs> I changed it. Okay, so it'll be end of February, beginning of March, somewhere around then of 2017. Um, we're going to do a two-day podcasting retreat, um, sort of an all-expenses-included sort of a deal. Not all, but most, where you come in and um, Audra's going to take us through like how how do you, you know, monetize your, not monetize, how do you, you get an effective return on your time or investment? How do you reach that why most effectively with a podcast? It's it's podcasting. Yeah. It's how do you build a podcast from the beginning instead of, yes. well, if you already, cause, cause we're using this time for ourselves too. So we'll have our old podcasts that we're trying to optimize and then we're going to have new shows. And so we need to decide, cause we've always said we're going to handle S- SNS FM like a network, right? So we have our lineup of shows. We're going to have to decide which ones get canceled, which ones get renewal um, and then which ones are just, we need pilots, like which one is worth sending a pilot. And maybe we'll send five shows to pilot and two of them will get greenlit. But we're going to have this process where we set up our podcast for success ahead of time. What are the questions that we, and there's like eight of them. They're very robust questions. They're like, how do we, if we can't answer these eight questions, we should not have a podcast. Yep. And I feel like that's true for anyone listening right now. If you can't answer these questions, your podcast should be tabled and you could use your time for other things. So yeah. it's, it's purpose to the podcast. It's, it's what, is, what exactly are you going after and how do you do it in a way that's intelligent to your business rather than superfluous? So with that preamble and knowing that's coming up, we'll tell you about that in, in a bit. Um, so my question is, how do you, what are the best, I don't want to say monetize because that's so wrong. That's so not the right way to look at it. But what are the different ways to get a return so that a podcast is worthwhile for, for you to do? Well, I mean, it all goes back to your why. Um, you know, are you looking to make money directly from your podcast? If that's the case, you're gonna have to bust your butt to grow your audience because basically audience numbers is what gets you sponsorships and direct cash. Um, another thing that you personally, I think that's the weakest way to monetize a podcast. Yeah. I mean, it's so much legwork. You have to basically devote every minute of your day to, you know, growing that podcast, you know, it's a push up front. And then, you know, once you get to that point where you've got a large audience, you've got sponsorship, it's not as much, but just be aware that people do this for a living, you know, like Gimlet Media, you know, I use them a lot, but they do that for a living, you know, seven days a week. Um, 
Yeah, it's 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 like trying to monetize traffic like online. Like that's the hardest thing to do. If you're going to start a YouTube channel and monetize traffic, that's the hardest way to monetize. If you're going to start a blog and monetize your traffic through AdWords, like there are fewer harder ways to make money online than that. So just yeah. be aware. Monetizing traffic is always like the most difficult route. Right. No, I mean, just direct money from the podcast. Now, the other thing is to just grow your audience. Um, And then from there, you know, with effective use of CTAs, which is something (laughs) we're going to be attacking as well, that you direct your audience to, you know, if you have products, if you have uh, anything for sale, you know, you can use the podcast to funnel people into it. Um, I think those are the, the, the two main ways. Um, what about um, what about just fan service? So, for well, example, yeah. if um, if Dave and I had a collective Inkwell podcast, now I don't know that we have time to do this or the follow through, <laughs> but like theoretically, because I think this is a this is how most fiction authors I think could really leverage this. So they're not trying to make a podcast to find new readers necessarily. They're making a podcast to thoroughly bond with those readers that they have. Um, so and like, that, it's a longer ROI. Um, but it, this is my favorite reason to just really connect with your community and bond with them and not necessarily bring in a whole bunch of new people to your audience, but to really just treat the people you have well and say, Hey, I care about you. Thank you for being you know, a part of my audience. Well, it's like we always talk about reader acquisition, right? That as cold as that sounds, if you're an author, you are in the business of reader acquisition, right? But that's only step one. Step two is how do I turn a reader into a fan? And yeah. then how do I turn a fan into a lifetime evangelist? Yeah. And it seems like something like a podcast where you're basically, you know, being intimate in their ear you know, that, that's a very close <laughs> shut up day. <laughs> I know, be intimate in your ear. I think there's an important distinction here because with, I just really, really want to emphasize that this isn't about how can I find, I mean, maybe it is, but the, the key thing is here, not how can I find new readers? I'm going to create a podcast and get new readers. Although you can do that through the, through the ways that we mentioned. This is much more like, um, think of a, Romance is probably a good example because that's such a, a, a genre where people read so fast and, and authors, even favorite authors, can become a commodity because it's just like, well, I spent a day with you. You know, I just read through your book in a day. And so authors, and I'm just kind of spitballing here, but if you really want to cement your, um, your position with a reader, you need to do certain things. So you can have really good author's notes. You can have better fan engagement on social networks or email and a good autoresponder series, but having a podcast where they really get into it. Amy just mentioned the book boyfriends podcast. And that's exactly the, uh, the example I was thinking of too. It's so good. Is that's the way that it's like, okay, well you're not leaving my life because you're, you're central. That's the fan service idea that Sean's talking about. Yeah, no, definitely. I love that. That's my favorite reason. And I feel like long-term that's, what's going to keep you motivated. Um, Because that's a big problem with podcasts is that people lose motivation. But when you've got, you know, such a connection with your audience and and your ROI is more than money there. And, you know, maybe that's just me. Maybe some people are extremely motivated by money, but I'm not. (laughs) Yeah, if you want to see that, um, Amy has posted the link in addition to all of our private Slack. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, go, Amy. Oh, Awesome. Um, yeah, but, but I actually think that that's, um, a a better way to approach it anyway, because even if you love money, right? Like, okay, I'm, I want to start a podcast because I want to be rich, (laughs) right? And that's my, that's my goal. That's, that's my why. That's my why, because I want to make five figures a month on my podcast alone, right? So I'm going to start that. The problem with that is that as soon as I don't have those numbers, I'm going to get burned out really fast. It takes a lot of time to get, unless you get the lightning strike of luck, you know, it's going to take a long time to build that kind of audience. Well, right. And if, 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 you're, if your why is just different, if your why is because I want to make sure that the 100 people listening buy every book I ever write and always tell their friends and they're the ones who post on social media, like a podcast with 100 people listening could be like the most valuable tool a fiction author has and they don't even realize it. And it's, 
but, but that's because most people are thinking about podcasts from the opposite way. But if you are somebody who can passionately talk about the things that you want to talk about, and even, even if like you become that voice, so you can, you can audit your listener or your, your fans. You can say, hey, I'm going to do a show next week. What do you want to talk about? or even bring on fans every once in a while. You know, we, we were talking a lot about podcasts that you could do leveraging maybe like Facebook Live and things. And, and that's uh, other areas to explore. Like how do, you, how do you get social out there? And I think that you, you wanna look at your genre for sure. If you're, if you're a fiction author thinking about doing this, then you really wanna look at your genre and think, what do people in my genre like, right? If you're in sci-fi, you're probably in good company that you could talk about a lot of TV that's on. You know, you can have Mr. Robot shows or Black Mirror shows and or The Arrival. Like all, I mean, look at how much stuff we talked about just in this show that could have been really good fodder for you know a, a sci-fi podcast if you're a sci-fi author. Yeah, definitely. I just MythBusters came to mind and they debunk things that they've seen on sci-fi shows, and I think that would just be fascinating, um, <laughs> debunked or something like that. So here's a here's a really good case study of now we uh, <clears throat> we on the self publishing podcast we 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 had a sponsor for a long time but we didn't start with one uh, 99 designs and we don't have them anymore and but I would just add that even if you remove that because that's kind of an incidental by the way like that happened we weren't looking for it is this show is heavily monetized like everything that exists at sterling and stone well okay that's not entirely true but but a lot of it the summit all of our retreats like the one we're going to do with audra and many others that are planned for this year boot camp the apprentice write publish repeat iterate and optimize the one with all the writing advice um everything like a lot of our name and a lot of our fiction came because we started this podcast and we we um we niched in the right way we polarized in the right, right way like we build our tribe and um, in a sea of like, there's a lot of other self-publishing stuff going on. We've done quite well because we had this podcast. So that's my favorite way to monetize a podcast, although it is a long-term thing. Well, you're right, but but that's the that's the key because it we didn't start this podcast to monetize anything, and that's the whole thing. Like it came from a place of um, passion. I mean, you wanted to know. You just wanted you wanted brains to pick. And it sounded like fun and we all had our reasons for doing it, but monetizing the show <laughs> was, was, was not there. I think originally we thought, oh, maybe we can have transcripts at some point. And if there's good takeaways, we could sell little eBooks or something, but it was so like, by the way and whatever. And <clears throat> it was a matter of, you know, bonding with our, I mean, cause here's another thing too. You can just start based on a passion and then know that you're going to bond with your audience and then figure it out. Like, okay, now I'm going to figure out what to do with, with my audience, but I'm going to create this show because I am passionate about um, either building my network or really giving something special to my hundred best readers or um, it, whatever your why is it's it, do it for the right reasons. Because if it's monetization, then A, you're probably setting yourself up for failure unless it's indirect monetization. Mm -hmm. And I think that every podcast should have a monetization strategy. Absolutely, because you have to pay for your time. But the monetization strategy isn't going to look the same as most podcast people teach you because right. they are teaching you, here's how you monetize your traffic. Here's how you monetize you know, your number of downloads or whatever. But there are so many ways that are much more intelligent to monetize a podcast other than counting your, your numbers and yeah. your downloads. Uh, I look at, I, I don't think every podcast needs monetization. Uh, exactly. I mean, you can get sponsorships and stuff, but. Right, but, but monetization is, I'm not, I don't even mean money when I say monetization. Okay. It's, it's what is the return for you. Right. And monetization could be, you know, creatively, creative fulfillment could be monetization there. Yeah, I, I see I see podcasting as sort of free advertisement if you do it well. Uh, you're investing your time in in something in a show, especially like like we talk about. You know, you mentioned the Collective Inkwell podcast. I, I love that idea because I want to I want to bond with the readers because I, I have the Walking Dave and a lot of people like like that show and they bond with me over that and that's awesome. But I I feel that there's a lot of people that probably don't ever listen to it because. It, it's, it's about me walking and losing weight and there's like a segment of audience that just doesn't care about that. Uh, I think a more casual sort of show like that though would be good 
and it would be something that readers, you know, would, some of them would enjoy listening to on a regular basis. And I think if you view your podcast as free form of advertising, uh, and, uh, like just a time each week or every few days or whatever, you're going to do it, that you get to like bond with your readers. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Great. You're, I mean, your audience isn't going to be upset with you if you don't have a CTA for the first couple of months, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you really want a podcast, um, if you're really passionate about it, about it, just do it, you know, but make sure you know what your why is, make sure that you can follow through. And there's just so many things to consider but don't let that scare you if you're really passionate about it because, you know, you can do it. So just before we go any further, I wanted to mention that we, uh, we have a podcast checklist. You know, what are the critical steps to start a new podcast or kick yours up a notch for free? Um, one of the uh, worksheet series that Christine has been making for us, which are great. So it's at sterlingandstone.net slash podcast dash checklist. sterlingandstone.net slash podcast dash checklist. I'll also add that um, if you were at all interested in what I was mentioning about a podcast retreat that we're doing with Audra in February, March of next year, of 2017, um, you'll find out about it if you are, if you go get that checklist as well. So that's an additional reason. Um, do we want to talk about that at all or should we just say that for- oh, I'm, I'm ridiculously excited about that. I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Like I- Woohoo! I'm so excited. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind talking. I guess a little bit about it. Um, but but before we we do that, I, I just want to point out um, Sandra Ann, which I think she said this so much better than I do, or I did. Um, monetization equals value and reward. Like mm -hmm. that's it. It's monetization is a is a quick quick and dirty word to express that, but it's not about mon money. It's about what is the purpose. And I think that starting. I think starting anything without knowing your purpose is purpose is better. It is kind of silly. Right. Um, and especially a podcast because what, who can, who can raise their hand and tell me Johnny's number one objection to anything. It's oh, I have so many. <laughs> it's the continuity. It's okay. We're starting this thing and now I've got it's sustainability, right? That's, that's it, Amy. Thank you. That's better than continuity. It's sustainability. And if you're going to start a podcast, you have to sustain that podcast. So you have to know why you're doing it and what you expect to get from the experience. So that's a large part of what we'll be doing at this, um, at this workshop. Um, but it's actually only a part of it. We'll also be doing branding. Um, and anybody who attends the workshop will get a branding package from Audra. She's the one who does all of our branding and has done a fantastic job. What does uh, that mean exactly with branding, Audra? Let me raise my hand here. You asked me what some of the mistakes people make are. You know, in, in podcasting, one of the biggest ones is not having good, clear branding. Um, so what I'm referring to is what you hear at the beginning and the end of a podcast. Um, it clearly states, you know, the purpose of your podcast, who it's for, and what they'll get out of it. And it does so with audio design that really just, I don't know, it, it reflects the feel of your show. And, and it's something that your audience will like. And if it's done professionally, it just, it sounds so much better. It can take up the, the quality level, the professionalism level of your podcast, you know, several notches just by doing that. Or, or down, honestly. When it, took, it took me a while to warm up to the, um, the, the intro music for Worst Show Ever, which Audra had commissioned, basically. Like, I actually I love it. Oh, no, no, it, I do I too. I had to warm up too. I had to yeah. warm up too. Do you know where I got that? What did you say? Do you know where I got that? Yeah, no I, think, I think I do. I want to say like Fiverr or something. It's Fiverr. It was totally Fiverr. Like, I, I usually don't use that, but I was I, just... And I'd I like to make a suggestion. I think we should rebrand it without that music and have just like car crashes. <laughs> God. Yeah, no, we're going to be freshening up all of our branding. So the branding package, you know, um, that I, I build will, I don't know, it'll make you sound great. Yeah, just I to be clear. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. I, I, I do notice, though, like a lot of the, the amateur podcasts, they'll have like really long intro music. It's like a minute and a half or two minutes. Like, I didn't tune in to listen to a song. I wanted to hear you. That's one thing that I hear. I don't like huge music gaps. That's just my style. It's my preference. But like, I got, I'm busy, you Get know? Get to the show. 
entertain me. <laughs> I, can go, I can go listen to music on YouTube if I want to, but yeah, that's, that's one thing that bothers me. But if that's what you want, if it works, you know. Well, it's, it's knowing your, your audience, yeah. maybe that works for some audiences, but I think with, with nonfiction, you know, people, people want to get to the point for sure. Like, and they are busy. Um, but, but Audra had a lot of like ninja stuff for us as far as the ideal links of shows and things like that. Um, yeah, the, the branding you did um, for Entrepreneur's Almanac, I think is my favorite yeah. among all of our shows with the, with the clock. And I just, I love it. It's just- it, A little clockwork. Yeah, and, and I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was the first one you did too. So I heard it and I was like, oh, I'm so glad we're doing this. <laughs> so um, just to be clear, a, a, a couple of notes on the, um, on the retreat. Uh, and we'll talk about this more going forward. It's only because this one is on the calendar. So we're, we're talking about it now. But we'll talk about some of what we're doing with retreats and the ideas behind that later. But, um, but just in, in short, what we're doing these retreats as premium experiences with a small handful of people where we'll be learning something. So, so like 10 ish people is what we're talking about. This isn't the smarter artist summit. This is less than a dozen people in a room in Austin, Texas for two days. Right. So, because it's, it's hands on yeah. and it's not just hands on as we build out our podcast, but it's hands on after you leave because she'll be doing that branding package for you. And, um, and there will also be follow-up calls and things like that. So, you know, you're away with something real, something tangible that you're going to be able to use. And I think that I, I'm just so excited about that. Yeah, there will be things that we learn um, through doing this event that will allow us to put together, you know, something more mass market for everybody. But the event itself, it is a premium workshop. It will be hands on for just a few people who, you know, want to walk away with something really substantial and don't mind paying for it. Right. And just as an added uh, bonus, I guess, is that you will sort of see uh, an insight into Sterling and Stone's process as well, because I mean, not a ton, obviously this is going to be about the attendees, but as Sean mentioned, we're doing this first year of, we call them experiential education. We're doing the first year of these retreats on topics that we want. So this isn't just like, Hey, we're going to show you some shit. This is like, we want to use this on the ground for our, I would say successful podcasting network. So yeah. So you'll be learning alongside us. Like it's, yeah. it's we're in tandem here. So uh, just to close this out, um, again, we, we don't have firm dates for that yet, but regardless of whether you're interested in that, pot, that retreat or whether you just want the free podcast checklist, which will you know, show you the sort of the critical steps, do's and don'ts, is um, just go to sterlingandstone.net slash podcast dash checklist. Again, that's a free download, but it will tag you as well. So you'll find out about the podcast retreat if you're on that. And we'll have to make a note for Audra to make sure that's our CTA for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Got that, Audra? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So uh, anything else to say? Anything to conclude with? Uh, well, okay, well, then, then, then I will. Um, l look forward next year. Like we are um, putting a lot of attention into revamping our shows to make them the best they can be and um, putting out new shows that are um, special in some way and just know that we really value our listeners we value you we wouldn't be doing any of this without you and so um, we're putting as much care and attention as we can into crafting the best listening experiences um, for for you and so it'll be really fun to I'm looking forward to the retreat just personally like it'll be fun to work with you know a few people but I'm also really excited just to work with Audra and our people and, you know, make our shows, make our 2017 podcast lineup, like unbelievably awesome. All right. So regardless, either way, get the free podcast checklist. If you are at all interested in potentially possibly doing a podcast at some point and um, sterlingandstone.net slash podcast dash checklist. Thank you for listening to the uh, self-publishing podcast and we will see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Peace out.